Hi, I'm Chris Frame and welcome back to my channel. Throughout 2020, the COVID-19 pandemic has caused an unprecedented global shutdown that has impacted almost all aspects of our daily lives. While various industries have been badly impacted, the travel industry is among the hardest hit. And while airlines, hotels and land-based resorts have been forced to downsize, suspending thousands of staff, cruise lines and the crew that run their ships find themselves in a unique position. In March 2020, as the global spread of coronavirus started to accelerate, the world's cruise lines entered into an extended and never before seen cruise pause. Over the coming weeks, cruise ships across the world ended their respective cruises and farewelled their passengers, leaving only the officers and crew on board. The officers and crew of a cruise ship perform a variety of tasks that allow for the safe operation of the ship, as well as for all of the hotel services, such as the provision of food and beverages, entertainment, housekeeping and guest services such as reception teams. Although the world's fleet of cruise ships were devoid of passengers, there were still large crews aboard each of the ships, and in some cases almost the entire crew are still on board, even now. When the cruise pause was announced, a number of cruise ships were undertaking world cruises. These voyages often occur during the northern winter months, with cruise ships from a variety of lines heading to the Southern Hemisphere between December and April. This presented cruise lines and the crews of these ships with a unique challenge. As coinciding with the global cruise shutdown, air travel was collapsing and airlines felt the pain of the coronavirus outbreak as well. Additionally, from March, many nations closed their borders to international travellers, meaning in many cases, the crew of cruise ships were unable to easily leave their ships in foreign ports and fly home as they would normally do at the end of their contract. Another issue to consider is that the cruise ships require a minimum number of people to enable the operation of the vessel. These essential personnel range from engineers, electricians, plumbers and maintenance teams who are needed to keep the ship in a safe and operational condition, to bridge officers who oversee the safe navigation of these ships, even during the pause and operations. This is because that while there is an extended cruise pause, these ships are in warm layup, which means that they are still running off their own power. This is because shutting the ship down completely would be a major escalation from where we are at the moment. Most ships that are undertaking world voyages started to return to their home ports in late March and early April. Once alongside and after receiving government clearance, some of these ships were able to release their non-essential crew many of those involved in the hotel operations and guest services. A good example of this can be seen when the Queen Mary II returned to Southampton in April. Having unexpectedly ended her world cruise in Australia in mid-March, the ship sailed with just 264 passengers on board, who were unable to fly. But an almost full complement of crew went with the ship back to Southampton. During the voyage, many of the crew were given access to passenger accommodation, allowing for a more comfortable voyage home, as well as enabling those on board to better practice social distancing. Once in Southampton, many of the hotel staff departed the ship, with officers lining the dock offering a round of applause as those crew left the ship after what had been a very unusual and stressful voyage. Essential crew members remain with the vessel, which has been alongside in Southampton, as well as at anchor off Weymouth. This situation is by no means unique to QM2 with ships such as P&O's Arcadia and Fred Olsen's Boudicca, to name just a few, also returning to the UK from long duration world cruises. Additionally, ships from the UK P&O fleet, Morella's UK based ships and Fred Olsen's fleet, as well as Cunard's Queen Victoria, have been able to return to home ports and discharge some of their crew. As the world's largest cruise market, the United States is home to many cruise ships. As such, there have been various lines berthing at popular cruise ports such as Miami, Fort Lauderdale, Los Angeles and San Diego, to name just a few of the ports where they disembarked passengers. But in many cases, most of the crew remain on board, unable to leave the ship due to border closures and clearance restrictions. This includes ships of the Carnival Fleet, Royal Caribbean, Disney Cruise Lines and Norwegian. Add to this that there are many cruise ships from across the world, with most if not all of their crew still on board including numerous ships at anchor off the Philippines, many of which were sailing far from their home ports at the time of the shutdown. Additionally, various ships from the Australian cruise market are present in Manila Bay, 
following the Australian cruise ban which forced ships to depart Australian waters. You can check out a video about that in the information card or I've linked it in the description below. This includes the fleet of P&O Australia and Carnival Spirit and Carnival Splendour, as well as the Queen Elizabeth, which had been based in Aussie waters since December and still has the vast majority of her 900 strong crew on board. It is important to note that while these ships have been relatively stationary during their cruising shutdown, they have been undertaking occasional voyages out to sea, primarily to allow for the exchange of water for desalination purposes. During this time, the bridge officers on several ships have used their creativity to plot unique courses, with the Sea Princess sailing a course that mapped out the Princess logo and the Queen Elizabeth recently riding Cunard in its wake. With air travel greatly disrupted, and some ports close to cruise vessels, various cruise lines have opted to repatriate their crew to their home countries via ship. This led to some amazing scenes where large clusters of cruise ships met to transfer crews between vessels. In fact, Carnival Corporation's chairman Mickey Arison recently shared information on his Instagram account that showed 18 Carnival ships in the midst of a delicately orchestrated manoeuvre to transfer crew for repatriation purposes. As you can imagine, being on board a deactivated cruise ship for long periods of time would be a stressful situation, particularly during a global pandemic where friends and family are at home and at risk from the disease. While there has been relatively little unrest among the crew on board these cruise ships, 15 crew from the Royal Caribbean vessel Navigator of the Seas have recently staged a hunger strike, demanding to be allowed to leave the ship and return to their homes. However, with borders closed and strict medical procedures being followed, discharging crew during COVID-19 is no easy feat for cruise lines or for local authorities. There has been a lot of negative media about cruising and cruise ships in the weeks since the COVID-19 outbreak commenced. And while some ships, such as the Diamond Princess, Ruby Princess and Artania, to name just a few, have been directly impacted by COVID-19 outbreaks, the majority of cruise ships remain virus-free. But regardless of the status on board each individual cruise ship, we should all take a moment to think of the crew on board the hundreds of cruise ships around the world who are doing their best to keep their ship a safe and healthy place during these unprecedented global events and who are often far from friends and family at home. Thanks so much for watching and I hope you found this video interesting. If you did, please don't forget to subscribe and hit the notification bell so you don't miss future videos. If you're interested in maritime history, why not check out my chat with Bill Miller about the resilience of cruising during past global crises? Or if you're more interested in cruising news, check out my cruise news playlist. Thanks so much for watching and when cruising resumes, I hope to see you on board.